Thank you for tuning in to the Helium Radio Network. You are listening to a rebroadcast of a previously recorded show. Welcome to Sessions with Sarah here on Helium Radio. Today I'm with Tanya Ambrose and she's like multi-talented. She's got so many things going on. She has Tea with Tanya podcast and all about the scrub life, blogging, and you do public service. You're you're a doula, is that correct? Yes, I am a bird doula. You know, I tell myself I do it all. First of all, thanks for having me, Sarah. I'm so excited to be here. Um, you know, it's been a long time coming, but we're here today. And oh, yeah. <laughs> like you said, I do I do want to commend you for pronouncing my name, both names right. Because oh. some people they'll see the spelling and they'll do Tanya or they'll just do something that I don't know. It's five letters and they'll just call it, make it sound like the alphabet. I don't know. <laughs> so I must commend you for getting the Thank first you. and last name pronunciation right. I love that. <laughs> you know, names are important, you know, but people, yeah. I don't know, Tanya, Tanya. I yeah, yeah I, um, I am a birth doula. I got my certification last September. Okay. I am the, what else do I, I do so much. I am a court appointed special advocate where I work with kids, you know, throughout the week, those are in the foster system. I do have a nonprofit. I'm the president and the founder of a nonprofit called Squad Bad Cares. We're mm-hmm. about, you know, helping those in the underserved communities, you know, trying to promote health and education because, you know, education is important. Our health, especially in today's society, is even more important so we're trying to you know bridge that gap and um you know I guess fix that disparity if we can and then as you said I have a podcast and you need fun podcast TV Tanya podcast where we talk about self-development you know Mm -hmm. wellness of course public health story because I am a public health professional as well so what else do I do I blog as you said all about the stuff like I just guys you know yeah do it I don't know where I find the time but you know when you're passionate about things you just you know it's, it's not really work it just flows like, yeah, you know, right. Cause I do pharmacy, but I really love doing my podcasting mm-hmm. meeting individual individuals like yourself. But like one of the things I have to ask, so being a doula, like, was that impacted by the COVID situation this past year? It definitely was. Cause when I went to the classes, it was in the middle of COVID. Mm-hmm. So, you know, at the end of the training, you're required to attend three live births. And because of COVID now, you know, everything is virtual or some right. hospitals aren't really allowing doulas to be even, you know, with their clients. So that 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 took me, you know, a while. I've had two virtual clients, you know. Oh, sometimes yeah. sometimes I do say unfortunately, but it's not unfortunate because, you know, I'm still there, but not in the flesh. You know, obviously you want to make right. sure that the family, you know, is safe as well as the hospital staff. But it, it has it has its challenge, especially as a new doula. It, it, it was challenging, but, you know, I'm finding that group now. You know what, Zoom is yeah. just you know, where is that? You know, you got to do Zoom and make sure you're equipping your, your mom and family, you know, to, um, for the best birth experience you can possibly have. But I am excited, hopefully soon, to um, be actually able to do an actual physical birth because some of right. these birthing, the birthing centers or hospitals now, they are opening back up so you can have doulas, mm-hmm. you know, you, you, know, you, get, you okay. have to be vaccinated or, you know, have to get tested before you're able to enter which you know I get tested every week so at this point it's like a mm-hmm. routine <laughs> yeah so, yeah so but it, it has been it has its challenge but also you know you're still being of service to these families so that that's also like the highlight that is cool yeah it is yeah and like are you did you get your vaccination yet I did I got it back in February I got the Pfizer mm-hmm. and let me tell you the <laughs> Those number one, I literally thought I was gonna die. I'm not really extra. Yeah, because you know, because I had it, I was fine. Like those number one, I thought, okay, you know what, this is it. Just take me now, because I, you know, I took it at work, and I was gonna still stay at work that day. And right. I took it at nine a.m. And I'm not gonna even lie. By eleven, I just felt really fatigued. You know, I'm always like, oh, I'm tired, but I have never right. felt it was that different. Way before. Yeah, my body was fatigue. heavy. You know, I was getting hot. I had a headache. I figured, you know, it's one of my regular migraines that I suffer from. But I had the same just, experience, yeah. It was a different feeling than chills, but I didn't get any fever. But it was just the chills and just the really, really, really tired. But mm-hmm. dose number two, I was like, everyone kept telling me, oh, dose number two is going to be the worst. I was like preparing <laughs> for that. But then when I got dose number two, it was just like, you know, a regular arm soreness and that was it. Nothing mm-hmm. else. I was like, okay, you know, it's been 24 hours. I'm waiting to get something else. That wasn't nothing. Happen. Nothing. So I figured, you know what, maybe if you got like a reaction with the first dose or second, this is going to be better or, you know, right. vice versa. 
Well, yeah. So you, you didn't have any reactions or you did? Well, now that you say like the first dose of the Pfizer, I had the headache as well. And I was, I'm, you know, like we're tired people because we're working, right. yeah. but it was a different kind of tired where I actually was like, you know what, tonight I'm just going to chill and hang yeah, out. And anything. again, the second dose was still tired. So I just made sure I, I made sure I had it when I wasn't working yeah. and, um, and the headaches, but I mean, a lot of the people with the Moderna ones are the ones. Yeah. Getting, I, ha- so. I haven't heard, um. Sorry to say, guys, but I haven't really heard anything great as far as the side effects. No. The, <laughs> Pfizer, the Pfizer, I've heard, um, you know, like I said, mild, mild reaction, which is expected with any, you know, with right. some vaccine. So, you know, but like I said, that first one, I thought, oh my God, I've never felt mm-hmm. this tired before. Like, you know, I'm never going to say I'm tired anymore because if this is what tired really tired is, is. <laughs> then yeah. I'm not tired, you know, but uh, yeah, but I am fully vaccinated, you know, everyone has their own opinion, but I, right. I did it because, you know, we are essential workers as well and I still want to mm-hmm. be be able to you know feel some level of safety if that makes sense right so yeah I mean you do kind of feel this huge sense of relief once you yeah. have it but you know there's still those people out there you know questioning no, I'm not trying to, yeah it's, it's, it's the science yeah. is there that's what I tell them and that's what I I, I said the same <laughs> thing I said I believe in the science and that's mm-hmm. where it's at I'm not going to even try to oh this yeah. oh that because I find it's not that worth it <laughs> I see especially on social media like they're they're saying certain things like facts, but it's not even, you know, mm-hmm. you know, back, back by the science. So I say, you know, right. sometimes you just got to keep scrolling out. If I feel like I want to like comment and, you know, I got to pick my days, but. Right. It is. Their own. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So tell me about the Scrub Life um, blog. I think it's really cool how you're kind of like mentoring millennials and helping them out. Like you tell them how they can get through finals and, yeah. and that's really cool to have because, you know, it is very stressful times yeah. for college students to do that. It stuff. sure is. And I mm-hmm. experienced that, especially with COVID. But I started the blog all about the scrub life back in 2017, I believe, when I, oh. I was in a nursing program, you know, trying to be a nurse, still trying to. And I ended up failing out of the nursing program by 0.5 points. And then oh. I said that my heart breaks every, every, I mean, I've gotten over it, but every time I tell this story, my heart just breaks up a little, a little tiny bit. Yeah. So I failed by 0.5 points in the program that I was in at the time, if you failed, because I ended up failing med surge, any nursing students, I'm sure you know what med surge is. You know, <laughs> at the time, the school that I was going to, you had, you fail med surge, you basically fail clinicals, even though I was doing well in clinical. What's med surge? It's like this, it's a club, it's a class or a course, it's called medical surgical, where you've been taught the basics of you know, nursing, like, you know, bedside right. nursing, you know, like you're learning about the different parts, like an anatomy and physiology, but an upgrade to that, mm-hmm. you know, learning about the body, how different medications interact, you know, all that stuff. I passed pharmacology, a class that was killing me when I was taking it, and I passed that with a B, and med surge, I just couldn't pass, I don't know why. Fail one exam, and they were like, oh, if you fail one, that's it, but anyway, yeah. I'm so short, I ended up failing, you know, I studied my butt off, trying to make sure I brought my grades up, and I just, by 0.5 points, and Mm. got dismissed from the program, and I'm just sitting, okay, what do you do, because I've never really seen anyone say, if you fail this program, like, how do you pick up yourself after, because, you know, it's really, it's not over, sad time, yeah, yeah. you know, it's really the sad time, and I didn't know where to look, I was trying to, let me Google, okay, what do you do when you fail, and honestly, I didn't really see anything at the time, so I said, you know, okay, after I decided to move here to Georgia where I am now for school mm-hmm. and to pursue other things you know I said okay let me start a blog where I can talk about my experience even though then I was still shy or ashamed rather I know. Like know that I failed because you know I'm like you know I'm from the Caribbean you know we're proud people you know you you grew up in a particular setting where you know always strive for your best and then it wasn't a situation where I was dumb or didn't know what I was doing it was just right. that they did say at the first day of class if you don't pass this second exam you know, you're going to have to do really, really well. And, you know, I failed that exam, but I didn't fail it really bad, but I feel it's a fail regardless, you know? And Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I started the blog to document my journey, trying to get back into the nursing programs and, you know, being rejected after time after time. And, you know, over the years, it just kind of developed into a college lifestyle blog, like, you know, me talking about how to get to finals, you know, what to do in between classes and these different things and, you know, incorporate all of me because it's got all about the scrub life. So I'm incorporating, this is what I'm listening to, this is what I'm watching, this is what I'm trying to eat, you know, trying to incorporate right. that, health, that health and wellness to still, you know, educate and empower. So that's kind of like my tagline. I'm here to educate, empower and have fun. But, you know, because we, we all can learn because I'm, I'm always going to be a student. I call myself a professional student because, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, so then that's that's where I 
started the blog and I ended up becoming a public health major, you know, taking that alternate route to becoming right. a nurse, which I still do want to become a nurse. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I get into this program that I apply to here because I am on the, oh, good. I'm on the wait list. So hopefully, you know, some good, some good news comes. Really, yeah. Really soon. But yeah, so that's when I started the blog and, you know, I've gotten enough feedback and response from others. I haven't been as consistent that I would like, I would like to be since I graduated. I'll tell you that. But, um, <laughs> you know, people that, I still see people are going to the blog to look, you know, final, what should I do? How can I take online classes? These different things. Cause I also, cause I graduated last year, Sarah, with my bachelor's in public health. And yeah. I, I also last year, my last year, my last semester, we, COVID came and we went right. on spring break and that was the end. I've never been back to school. I've never seen any of my classmates. We, it's so just, it was, was so it. crazy how it was, just yeah. Yeah, I, life just stopped. I was like, wow, because I it was spring break. I went back home to Antigua and I'm like, okay, I'm coming back. We're going to go to school. And that was it. Everything was online. And I feel like for me, I'm, a, I'm more of an in-person learner. So, I, you know, I create like blog posts so that people can understand. I know you may be an in-person learner, but this is what you can do to maximize your time at home or find different right. environments. So, yeah, so that's, that's, that's kind of the brand, you know, promoting positive living is what I tell myself because we all could use some positive. right in our lives even at our lowest moments we can all use that you know right well I don't like to say that saying everything happens for a reason but you know things do happen for Mm -hmm. a reason like I I could tell you stories about pharmacy school kind of same thing you know I had to take a step back once because you know a c minus wasn't good enough for you know oh you know you take it you're playing tennis you're you're in biochem organic chem and you're taking this philosophy and it's a lot and I'm so sorry I got a c minus and physics or whatever it was trying to have a life life I hated physics I was never into physics I could never understand what was going on and then you know we couldn't understand the man that was teaching so it just was yeah yeah that's always a big thing too like who's teaching you too that 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 is a big thing because I remember when I was taking pharmacology nursing school I was like this class is going to be the death of me but you know (laughs) I do find what, what I will say even though I haven't been in the nursing program for a while like that muscle memory everything is still in my in my mm-hmm. head right miraculously it's like you know I'm able to say, okay you know I can see this drug is going to interact but as you say it just depends on what instructor we would have had because some and I think that was the issue with my medical surgical class but you know I, I tell myself I'm not going to blame you yeah. know I try not to because it, it took me years here for me to get over that failure like I was depressed I was like okay I'm a failure maybe I'm not meant to be a nurse you know because I think yeah. I should be of service and then that's why I took the public health route. I say, okay, you know what, I may not be in a clinical setting right now, but I can take this route, you know, mm-hmm. and, and help on the front lines in a different way. And that's why I ended up studying public health. And you know, it's not a decision that I regret, to be honest. No. No. And it's led to so many different things. And now you have your podcast. Yeah. So what do you guys talk about on the podcast? Give everybody oh, a little we, we talk about it. It's called Tea with Tanya. You know, I, I'm a tea lover. <laughs> I do tea every <laughs> Mine would be like drinking with Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a coffee person. Like again, like I said, we grew up in the Caribbean. So I'm not, was, no, I'm not really kind of either. No. <laughs> you're not, you're, oh my god, you're like the first person. I'm not gonna even like that. It's not a coffee. Yeah. I gotta have my Starbucks on my express. I'm like, I don't even know. Yeah. I don't even know what to order. Right. I don't even know what I would order. If I right. Starbucks, I have to it's intimidating. You it go is, there and you're like, I'm like, I need to pick me up. Like if I'm on vacation, there's, mm-hmm. there's only one coffee shop that I like. It's called Honeydew Donuts here. Mm-hmm. It's like local, but okay. then like it's not everywhere. So when I go out of out of town, I'm always like, I like sweat when I go up to the Starbucks <laughs> counter. Right? I'm like, I don't know what a mocha grande, yeah, latte, whatever is, you know. So yeah, it's I have tough. to like take my best friend. I'm like, okay, what what I'm I'm at Starbucks today. What do I get? And I'm like, that is just so crazy, you know. But yes, yeah, so yeah. I'm a tea lover, so that's why I, you know I call it tea with Tanya. So it's like a plan with we talk about you know women's health, wellness, you know self development, and of course I share some public health stories because mm-hmm. I do think you know our everyday lives believe it or not, involves public health. Some people, you know, having sidewalks, that's public health, like I tell people, having stop signs, you know, right. the stop lights that we, we are using, all that is because of public health. So, you know, I do share some of that, some of that stories, you know, women's health, trying to, you know, push, again, like I said, promote positive living, but also sharing different stories, you know, so yeah. how, we can, how we can better ourselves. You know, I do have other guests that I do interview, and I'm hoping I can have you guys. And of I'm course. I'm to have her come anytime. on, especially in that, mm-hmm. um, from a logical um, point of view but yeah that's what we talk about everything it's all about me different flavors you know I do talk about you know life going up in the Caribbean that's that's something that I have coming up next as well because you know oh that's I'm, cool I just I'm, I'm a lot in a good way yeah 
I do a lot, yeah. yeah. So, like, have you been able to go home to visit at all? No, the last time I was home was last March before everything went mm -hmm. crazy. That's it. When yeah. I, I went home for spring break, that was, like, at the... What, funny thing is, when I left Atlanta to go to Antigua, I was at the airport, and we only had 96 cases in Atlanta at that point. By the time I landed in Antigua, it, like, doubled. Okay. And that was, yeah. like, a four, that was like a four-hour flight. And I was like, mm -hmm. you know, so then I just never... Haven't been back home because you know the, the you have to quarantine for fourteen days back home and you know how right. it is. you only mm -hmm. have technically fourteen days vacation, you right? Know? So I, I right. haven't been back home. I do want to go home, but you know, again, safety for me it, it comes first. So right, wait, yeah. Once everything is, I mean, I guess it's getting easier for us to travel or you know do certain things again once you're vaccinated, and right. also once you know you're you know you're doing what you need to do. You're wearing your mask and whatever. So I guess it's getting better, but we'll see because it's unless they they change that quarantine protocol i'm just gonna be here stuck forever this is the longest i've gone without <laughs> going home <laughs> <laughs> well like have you seen like lately in the news how they um they're cracking that like people were like selling these covid cards so do you yeah. think that maybe like there should be a better way for them to show proof that we actually had our vaccines if these people are buying it on the hot market or whatever? Yeah, when I when I heard it, I was like, well, because that's still the caramelly the card that I got when I got my doses in my wallet. They'll say, I don't, I don't know why, because I don't want to lose it. So I say, no, just in case somebody needs um, were you vaccinated? I have, it's like an ID, but I'm yeah. not sure. I think that there needs to be a better way, because like you say, anyone really can doctor the cards that we got, yeah. let's be honest. So you can just- right copy paste and print so they got to be i know i saw in the news as well that they were going to do like a vaccination passport yeah so I, i'm I not sure we got to find they're gonna go that way. way yeah yeah i guess something in the system you know like when you go to the immigration to the airport they can look you up it, it, it has to be that way i guess electronically because having again that mm. paper and i feel like anyone can make it do that like back then when we had our immunization card i don't think we were thinking oh let me doctor this you know let me right fake it but no the world is just totally different it has changed mm -hmm. so they, they we have to have a different way i think electronically would be you know a much efficient way because again i can go oh hey can you print this to me this i got vaccine you know vaccine. yeah i got my vaccine you know immunized and it, there's there's no real proof so i guess if it's in like a system a government system like you know everything else social security that might be the way it's, it sounds like a lot or it's probably yeah. invasive, but i mean let's be honest we do have dishonest people and the world that we're a lot of it. Right now, there's, there's too many disease you know yeah so that, that might be the way i think you're right i like because especially when you get a vaccine people might mm -hmm. not know this it does get sent to i don't know where it gets sent to but there is somewhere if there's a bank because like when you pull up people's profiles you can see that they've had their okay, vaccine right that so it is it sent in the health department but not used to that so it is there doesn't matter it's there yeah okay. it's sent somewhere i don't know if it's a cdc or whatever because i remember yeah. when flu shots started becoming big again and i was like oh i guess i'll get one and the last time i had one it said was when i was born oh, <laughs> so really? wow. there is wow. yeah so there is a bank that does show but so a lot of people probably don't know that so i think you're right i think because of that i think right. electronic would be the best well, you know way. since since you're into science let me ask you this i know it's your podcast but what do you think when you <laughs> when you hear that oh you know it's taken such short time for, for them to create a vaccine and you know you hear all this debate because that's what I've been hearing a lot and I choose sometimes to ignore it because I'm just like you know I feel like mm -hmm. for me before you answer you know we're in a different world now technology is so advanced funding mm -hmm. is available because you know back many many years ago you had to wait a long time before you can get some sort of result before they even made these vaccines so what do you think now that when people are saying oh I don't trust you know the government why don't trust this vaccine because it's, it's was, it was done into short of a time like what, what do you respond and say or what do you even feel as a you know regular person um well because i know that they were already working on a coronavirus right. vaccine but you know people don't know also dogs used to get coronavirus it was a thing for dogs yeah. so they already kind of had a vaccine for dogs so they probably were playing off that they've been in the stages of development but when they you know, the government finally threw a whole lot of money into these companies and you just stopped everything and just went to work on this, you know, they were probably pretty close to having this in yeah. the bank. So I'm sure that's what it is. And I don't think there's any conspiracy. I, it, it's something they've been working on. And there's other things that they're, pro they're probably working on. And I'm hoping the next thing that they 
develop out of this. One of the good things that may come of this is like they can get rid of some cancers because mRNA yes, technology yes. mm-hmm. is a big thing. That. And that's what they think will cure some cancers. So, yeah. you know, bravo. So, <laughs> yeah, so that, that, that may be a plus and upside, you know, to this whole pandemic. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I just, again, I just wish that we, many of us would educate ourselves. No, it's, it's mm-hmm. no, and again, it's good to have a little conspiracy here and there just for the fun of it. But when, when you're actually saying it as facts, that's when we, right. we, that's when that line gets, you know, drawn and we say, okay, we gotta mm-hmm. be better. But I'm glad, I'm glad you're on the same wavelength as me because I'm like, okay, I'm not the only one. Cause you know, you gotta be, <laughs> you gotta be careful sometimes how you, how you talk to certain people because they'll be like, oh no. Yep. So, yeah. So, um, we I, talk I, about I, that I, like on another show I do. And it, it's just like, everybody is so, is so sensitive to any information and I feel like when they're wrong they're the ones that, that get the most defensive about anything out there oh, and they don't want to hear the truth you know that they want to believe what they want to believe like Fox News or whatever <laughs> okay well you know you know I'll leave that there hours. yeah we'll leave that <laughs> we're not gonna even open that can of worms but you no know, but I'll leave that there <laughs> as they say the truth the truth the truth does hurt I mean not many people want to hear when they're in the wrong but you know again I guess you mm-hmm. and I we got to keep you know, being an advocate, more or less. Again, I'm right. not here to tell people what to do, but that's a representation of how we would go about, you know, our daily lives. People can be inspired you right. know, by that. That's what I was mm-hmm. saying. Even if one person, all it takes is just one person to tell another person. And to keep you know, listening. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because that's why I did, like, finally, I was like, I'm going to do some videos for, like, I not a big TikTok, TikTok, TikToker, but I, you yeah. know, did some videos regarding the vaccines. So... Of course, then the next day after did the Johnson Johnson one, it got put oh, on hold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, somebody actually wrote, like, wow, wow, this 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 video, it somebody wrote like something like to the fact of this video like went dark like really quick, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, even... I mean, I didn't see that coming. Yeah, so. no, nobody did, you know. I mean, I don't know. I, I saw people saying, you know, six, I saw something on Twitter, someone saying six people out of I guess the many who would have gotten the vaccine, but again, you know, again, it takes just one. So mm-hmm. I guess they gotta go revise and you know make sure everything is 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 fine. Because I feel like right. to me, my my takeaway, even with any vaccine, I say growing up, we got everything. We didn't even question on why we getting that vaccine. It right. just was like you know what you have to, right? You know, so then that's why I wasn't really as hesitant this time around. Because again, you know, right, being an essential worker, and I just wanted to have like a sigh of relief to some extent because exactly, like, you know, we've been walking on an edge for a full year. And you going know, into work like that, was yeah, just like, living, living every day, I'm like, and you know, it wasn't really good for our mental health when you think about it. I don't think many of us have sat down and think about, wow, what was the last year like living in this world? So I was like, you know what, I be I trust the science, did my research, and I say, as a public health professional, you know, is what it is. Vaccines right. have never known to kill anyone or do anything, and you know, right. so yeah, it's a, it's a small risk to take, but it's better than feeling on edge. Yeah. throughout a whole shift yeah. that somebody's walking and coughing at you or you walk by like recently we've had a couple of like people who've been out and then the person they've been with aren't vaccinated and they have covid so i'm like well i'm not as worried you know yeah 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 i'm like i'm not gonna worry about it and i will say like i've been okay so just doing the same things and just protecting myself but yeah. i feel a little bit better <laughs> yeah no me too i, I agree I, i'm the same way i feel a little yeah. bit better you know <laughs> Fingers crossed that everything continues to go yeah. moving forward. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, but thank you so much for doing this. Um, where can everybody reach out to you and um, participate in blogging and the tea? Yes, um, so you can <laughs> find me on my blog. It's called allaboutthescrublife.com. Um, on Instagram, the podcast page is Tea with Tanya Podcast. Mm-hmm. And then you can follow me on my personal page, which is All About the Scrub Life. <clears throat> Sorry, All About the Scrub Life on um, uh-huh. Instagram. In a way, I share you know, lifestyle stuff, what I'm doing, what I'm reading, you know, trying mm-hmm. to educate and empower and of course again. Yeah. yeah. You can go listen to the podcast on what is it on? I forgot. Wow. Spotify, Spotify Apple, Apple. Yeah. Spotify, <laughs> Apple, Google, you know, wherever you listen to your podcast, you can find it there. I really appreciate that. And you know, thank you, Sarah, for of having course. me. I am, you know, usually I'm always nervous when I'm doing an interview and from the beginning the minute we got on you just made me relax I'm not gonna oh yeah I'm oh so i relaxed. thank you i always oh, tell yeah. people so when you, have when that you come on it's like talking to a friend we don't yeah. have any you know I, I like that so thank you so much for, um, yes. for having me 
Of course. All right, everybody, make sure you reach out to Tanya. She's got a lot mm -hmm. of inspiring stories. And um, I hope you liked what we chatted about today. Mm -hmm. uh, thank mm -hmm. you for listening to Sessions with Sarah on Helium Radio. And we'll see you guys next week. Thank you for listening to Helium Radio. The views expressed by show hosts or their guests are their own and should not be construed in any way as advice from Helium Radio. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our website. Personal perspectives expressed by producers, writers, and editors will always be presented as such. Any rebroadcast or retransmission without the express written consent of Helium Radio is strictly prohibited. Thanks for listening.